George Kittle, and I am from the state of Iowa. I grew up all over southeast Iowa. I grew up around my family, my cousins. I always talk about my Uncle Pat. He's someone that inspires me daily. Every time I'm there at a football game, he's the first person I think about. Pat spent a lot of his life serving others, whether it was in the military or being a school teacher. Pat has always helped out the person who might not have the best shot. He's always been a guy that helps the underdog. He is one of a kind. He's someone that deserves a lot, and even though he doesn't want it, he's gonna get it. What happens when someone who spent their whole life, their whole life, giving to others, finally get something in return? Oh my God. This is the story of unsung heroes, amazing trucks, and dreams that come true. This is the truck it list. The truck it list. This is the truck it list. My name is Patrick Cohen, and I'm from Burlington, Iowa. Burlington is a uh, nice little river town. We've got about 30,000 people. Other Iowans say, Pat, how do you like living in that huge city? And I'm like, you can drive across it in 10 minutes. It's not a city, it's a town. Growing up, I think I've learned the value of hard work and purposefulness from all the farmers around us. It was always left hand, right hand, helping each other, the sense of community. I grew up being taken fishing by my grandfathers, my dad. We had a pond in our backyard. Fishing's big for me. No matter where I've been in the world, it's always great to come back to Iowa. Uh, my wife teases me. She goes, you jump off the aircraft and you kiss the ground. I'm Jennifer Craker Cohen. Patrick is my husband and we've been married for 34 years. Try that one. Okay. Pat was a student of life, not necessarily academics. <laughs> Look at Grandpa. <laughs> he was a fighter in high school. He was a wrestler and football player, and he was very rebellious. Pat and I met when I was 16. Um, I can remember the night. It was in July of 1983. A group of my friends said, let's go to the Henry County Fair dance. A bunch of my friends and I said, hey, let's go to the fair dance. There'll be girls there from all over the county. Pat had his hair slicked back and drove a motorcycle, and he was very handsome. He caught my eye. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to ask this guy to dance. She came up and asked me to dance, and uh, we were talking, and it felt as if I'd known her forever. He had me dying laughing the whole time. I came over that night, and I said, I think I met the man I'm going to marry. At age 16, I said that. It was history. You know, she had me. My decision to become a teacher came from Jason Allen Hainick. I met Jason my freshman year of college, and we became immediate friends. Suddenly, here's a brother I didn't know I had. If there was an adventure to be had, good or bad, he was in. We both were going 100 miles an hour in everything we did, everywhere we went. We're living larger in life, and people had told us both, somebody's going to get hurt someday. We were horsing around driving. He flew out of the back of the truck, hit a road sign, and ruptured his liver to the point where he was bleeding to death on the inside. He was strong enough and healthy enough that he ran over, pulled me out of the truck. You all right? You all right? The next thing you know, Jason's on the ground, and then he's dead that quickly. Right before he died, Jason had told me, well, what are you going to do with your life? I said, I'm going to become an engineer, and I'm going to join the Army, and I'm going to stay in the Army for 20 years. He goes, why wouldn't you be a teacher? I said, I hate teachers. You know, uh, they made fun of my brother Andy, who had mental health issues. So Jason said, well, be, go back and change it then. He said, if you don't like education, go change it. Don't sit here and complain about it. Make a difference. Woo, the world continues to turn. My children are over here. And so I became a third grade teacher. So today I'm gonna to help you learn some of the same lessons I wanted my kids to learn. But soon after that, I got put on active duty. When Pat was still in college, his brothers kept on encouraging him to join the National Guard. And he went to Germany with the 224th Engineer Battalion. And then 2005, we were home. Um, he got a phone call 
I said, what's going on? And he said, I'm being deployed. I went, whoa, okay, where? And he said, Afghanistan. I said, where is Afghanistan? I mean, really, we didn't even know, so. He went over there as a colonel. He was out on over 50 missions there, and he had a lot of Afghani soldiers and a lot of American soldiers working for him. It was hard. That experience gave me, like, what it's like to be a single parent. <laughs> I'm back here holding down the fort. Having four kids, you just got to keep on going. Once a week, I'd mail him a package. I just wanted him to know that we were thinking of him. I wanted him to think of home, know that we were still there. People fail to realize what the spouses do while you're deployed. The guys that went with me, something like an 80% divorce rate within a year returning home. And it's just, uh, it tears families apart. That year was the year from hell. Hey. I came home, I had a house, I had kids, I had a wife, you know, everything was there. But in all actuality, I was a mess. You know what I mean? But I thought I wasn't. First two years he came back, it was just very difficult. How do you come back from being adrenaline and on 24 hours, seven days a week to this essentially very boring, mundane life? I think he was doing things that he didn't realize. The first year back, he had five car accidents. We would take a walk and he would reach for his gun. Going to a football game, they would fire off a cannon and that just about sent him. Fourth of July, fireworks had to leave. You wake up and you're like, I can handle this, I can handle this. Pat, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just calm, calm. calm. Get that out of your head. Oh, yeah, I don't have to have a gun. You're not there anymore. Of course, he had PTSD because he was out there, he was in the field. It took a long time for him to re assimilate. Thank God I was married to Jenna. <laughs> but eventually, I've got it under control with the uh, help of my family. Look at the clock on the wall. That thing doesn't stop. Life's passing you by. You absolutely must pick yourself up, dust yourself off, ask yourself, what did I learn from this? What did I learn from this? Uncle Pat is my mom's sister's husband. I remember him from my earliest days of childhood, hanging out with them. I always felt like uh, Uncle Pat was a superhero. That's just kind of how I always felt. After Pat got back from Afghanistan, he was offered to go to a military college to go up the ranks and maybe be a general, but he chose to stay and be a school teacher. He, just got, instead of questioning you, uh, he has recalibrated you know, to being a parent again, to being a dad, to being a school teacher, a superintendent. He was a third grade teacher for 10 years. He was a middle school associate principal for six years, and then Pat has been a superintendent for 13 years. I clearly see my calling to be advancing children through education one child at a time. They're gonna have a better life because I poured my life into theirs, because they know that I care. You watch their imagination lighting up. There were two big things that helped him to reassimilate back into real life, back into our home life. One was going back into education, and the other one was being outside, fishing, being out in nature. My Uncle Pat got some land in southeast Iowa, and the whole family would go down there, fish, eat food, grill, enjoy the lake. You know, everybody needs time away or time alone um, to deal with things. And I think that just allowed him to process I just let out the emotions that he was experiencing, and I think it's a lot easier to do that out there by the water and the land. He's doing a lot more reflecting at this point in his life. And now Pat has a lot of dreams. He started planting trees that we won't see grow. He's thinking of a legacy. He's thinking of our family. He's thinking of our children's children. Just trying to build something that will, you know, be for generations to come. How are you? I'm good. I now invite Mr. Patrick Cohen, superintendent of Burlington Community School District to address and certify the class for the final time. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, eight days and I'm done.
Uncle Pat, I learned that he was going to retire. I just remember walking up and down the hallways with him and every single person would say, hi, hi, Pat. Congratulations. And he would say hi to every single person. He knew everybody's name. I think that, especially in school, small town Iowa, I think that means a lot to all those people. It meant a lot to me. George got a hold of me one day and said, Jenna, I, I really want to do something special for Patty's retiring. And I went, oh, are you kidding me? I, you don't have to do anything, George. And he said, well, what, what do you think of what he would enjoy doing in retirement? And I said, well, I want him to fish more. I want him to be outside more. He needs to do that. He needs to relax. He needs to dream. He just needs to be. So he said, well, what about like a fishing truck? And I went, no, George, a fishing truck? Are you kidding me, a truck? Pat has changed lives of so many people. And He's such a unique individual, and like that's why I'm so excited to be able to do this. This is way too amazing of an opportunity to be able to, you know, give my uncle a fantastic retirement gift of something that he'll actually use, while also being able to team up with Real Truck and, you know, gift this to somebody that is deserving of it. I'm Brian Hayes. We're here at my shop, Brian's Motorsports in Hendersonville, Tennessee, where we build trucks, Jeeps, cars, anything that's got wheels on it. We sell a lot of real truck accessories, so you never know from one person can become side steps, bed rug, ladder racks. We have a diverse customer base, so you never know what you're gonna sell, but yes, when it comes to accessories, we sell a lot. This build for Mr. Pat Cohen, 2022 Ford F-150 four-wheel drive, is probably the most accessorized truck I think we've ever built. The theme of this truck in my eyes is, this is a retirement fishing truck is what it is. You start at the front, we have a Weston grill guard. The Weston brush guards on these things are really great. Everybody calls them cattle pushers. So normally if you're going through the woods, there's bushes or trees or whatever, he's not really gonna worry about scratching his truck up. He's just gonna push his way on through and take care of wash it off when he gets home. We have an ABS uh, vent shield for the front with a light bar and then also some rain guards. Super lift leveling kit in the front. to add the 33-inch Toyo mud tires along with the Raceline wheels. To accent the wheels and tires, we added a set of Bushwhacker fender flares. You step around the side at the N-Fab step bars. Go on the top of the truck, we've got an ARE basket, of course full of LED lights. We have the ARE fishing rod pods. Kind of one of my things, I think it's one of the coolest additions to the truck. 90% of the time you see a guy running down the road 90 mile an hour and he's got fishing rods hanging out of the back of the truck and lures flying everywhere. With his rod pods, he really don't have to worry about it. He can store them, you ain't gotta worry about nobody getting in or taking them. He's ready to hit the lake or wherever he's going. To go along with the rod pods, we've got some undercover swing cases. That way you can put all his fishing lures, weight, tackle, everything in that, and that way it's all organized for him. So the back flip on this truck, when it closes, the tailgate locks, everything's safe in there and locked and nobody can get in it. When it comes to pinstriping, as long as the flow of the pinstripe and color match, that's really my big thing. As long as it follows the body line, colors, I think it looks great. Overall, I think the truck come out great, phenomenal. From the pinstripe, the wheels and tires, everything come out well. I think it's phenomenal for uh, George Kittle to be a part of the giveaway in this truck. Damn! Oh. oh my goodness. We're driving to the park right now. The family's there, Pat is there. We're gonna gift him this beautiful F-150 fishing truck customized, and it's gonna be a great day because he has no idea it's coming. He thinks he's just helping me out with a small little commercial, but in reality, uh, the whole day's for him. To surprise Pat, we came up with a plan that we are filming a commercial. He has no idea that the focus is on him. He's thinking really the focus is on George. Well, there they all are. 
Holy cow. Oh, this is the, wow. Okay. What do you think of that? Holy wow. cow. Hey, hi, George. Nice. Oh, heck, man. I made it. This isn't too over the top, is it? Whoa. You know, I can see the kayak. I can see the, you know what I mean? The canoe on there. You could, you could do it. There's a whole bunch about that. Oh, hi, yeah. everybody. I haven't hi, seen George. you yet, man. Right. Not bad. I'm good. One of the things I learned in Afghanistan was judge people know where what's going on quickly, you know, and have your radar up. I was kind of uh, not as quick on my feet as what I probably should have been. Everybody want to see the truck? I'd love to. Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah. This is like an outfitted fishing truck. Yes, it is. It's a fishing. Oh, we have lights. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It is. The old seat covers. Nice. Yeah. It swings. For short people like me with not much reach. Yeah, you're not wrong. You are kind of short. See? For you short people. Yeah, you got to handle it. You can, like, fly on it. All right, family. You all joined me here today to help me shoot a wonderful commercial. So thank you so much for helping me do that. But another cool thing that we're celebrating is also Uncle Pat is retiring. I am. That's pretty cool. Just after like 33 years. Years, years in the military, yeah. superintendent, and like 200 years of teaching third grade. Yeah, that's right. right. Something like that. You know what? I look good for my age. Hey, you do look great for your age. Um, but just to touch on that just a little bit, Pat, Ever since I was a kid, I only have very positive memories of you. Your contagious love, your contagious energy, your overdramatic storytelling. <laughs> you, can, you can literally make walking to the mailbox like a motion picture. Your entire life you've been supporting other people. You have been servicing your country, helping kids, helping other faculty. Your entire life you've just been helping everybody else out. And really, we completely lie to you. Real Truck has allowed me to create this awesome fishing truck and we're actually gifting it to you. Wow. It's your truck. It's your truck. So if you could, um, because we wanted to support you just a little bit. And so could you get your truck keys here, sir? And just enjoy yourself because thank you for being you. Oh yeah. And thank you for everything. So what we're gonna do? I'm not even, this has to sink in. Yeah, just take a take a second. You're good. Take yeah. a deep breath. I'm a bit overwhelmed, and uh, it's uh, hard to put into words. Um, you don't realize that you spent 33 years, you know, uh, helping kids uh, go into an, uh, a high need school with a lot of poverty, homelessness, you know, and that type of thing. And uh, Jenna. Uh, she beat my ass through undergraduate, graduate school, and then on to the uh, EDS qualification. Um, I'm overseas, uh, engaged in uh, fighting uh, terrorists, and she's at home with the kids. I came home, our house was still there. Our marriage was still there. And uh, about 80-some percent of the guys that did what I did are divorced within six months to a year of coming home. So. Thank you. Maybe too good of a catch. <laughs> Still are. So I've been lucky to be around great people, like my all pro nephew, hey. George Kittle. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Oh, yeah. You want to take it for a spin or anything? Yeah. Uh, hell yeah. Yeah, let's go, dude. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Woo. All right. Yeah. I was caught pretty flat footed. I was like, wow. Man, an F-150 four-wheel drive is the yeah. ultimate truck. And now I've got one. <laughs> you know, it's funny, as a, as a kid growing up on the farm, my dad always told me, remember, a truck is a tool. This is much more than a tool. <laughs> it really is, man. It's man. a toy and a tool. What a great truck. Because the uh, land down at Oakville, I can just pull up, put the tailgate down. Uh, Cooking, grilling. Yeah. and. Uh, Keep that connected. It's that unconditional love and connection. Yes. Reinforce it in a place to nurture it and a place to realize this is where this has happened for generations. Yeah. And then pass it on to the next. The power of that unconditional love that just flows through the Craiger family. It's it's insane. It, it's it's nuts. You don't even you it don't see it really anywhere nuts. else. To be able to gift someone who I've looked up to and someone who I've admired, someone I've respected for my entire life, 
It was awesome. All right, so we got some special things in here. Nice. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I think you can dabble with that. Holy bucket. What is it in? Woo. It was humbling. It was uh, exciting. It was deeply appreciated. Awesome. Thanks, Pat. We've outfitted this truck with everything that he needs. Look at that, not broke, ready to go. It's gonna allow him to do the things that he wants to do from putting stuff in the back of the truck and lugging it around everywhere. To fishing on the lake. Probably. It's just gonna allow him to, you know, do the things that he dreams about on a consistent basis. And you know, that's what we're trying to encourage. Just more time for him to smile, sip a beer, catch a fish, and hang out with his family. I thought he was gonna say, I, I shouldn't take this, Jen, I shouldn't. And I think there's a part of him that says that, but there's another part like, oh, yes, this is so great. <laughs> this truck is special. I can see this truck someday being full of grandkids. You know, go around the lake, run into Oakville, and you can all get something at the general store. You know, that type of stuff. So, in the story of the truck, too, George's name's on the tailgate, you know, and uh, which would just make it all the, all the better, you know, all the better.